Uh, first of all, I recommend looking at the Ubuntu releases page so that you can pick from one of the long-term support versions, if that's what you're going for. Uh, the latest release is also a long-term support, so I'm going to pick that one. And I go with 32-bit because I've been told it's a little bit more efficient on a virtual machine, and also I know that some software works better with 32-bit um, libraries and such. Uh, I think the 64-bit version has the 32-bit libraries installed as well, so shouldn't have any problems, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the 32-bit. And I go with the desktop edition um, just because it comes with everything. If you go with the server alternate install CDs, I think it has a, a little bit less software, um, and, but I don't think either of these come with a desktop by default. Uh, anyway, so I've actually already downloaded that. I've got it right here. And the next thing to download would be VirtualBox. VirtualBox is free. It works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. Um, <clears throat> there's two packages you need. One that's operating system specific and the other that is the extension pack which is uh, there's just some parts that are more proprietary. They're under a different license and so they're not distributed in the same way. Um, but not too clear other than that but the extension pack is helpful for um, having support with interoperability between your native machine and your virtual machine. So I've also already downloaded those. So I'll go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Uh, unlike most Mac applications, this one can't just be drag and dropped into the applications folder. This installs um, system level drivers. So it needs administrative privileges and it has to do a system level install, not a user level install. Okay, now that that's done, the next thing is to install the extension pack. Oh, by the way, it installs to the application folder. I'll just scroll down to show that real quick, right there. So the extension pack just gives a little bit of extra support. And with that, I'm ready to create my virtual machine. What I'm going to do here is just name this Ubuntu 12.04 LTS 32-bit. I often run multiple machines, so I like to have a descriptive name. Uh, you can see it already detects that it's Linux and Ubuntu, so we can just go on to next. That detection sets some defaults, like the amount of RAM for Ubuntu. It's fairly minimal. And then we need to create a virtual disk because this isn't actually going to partition the real hard drive. Everything that's done here is going to be done on a file that looks like a hard drive to the virtual machine. Um, and 8 gigabytes is more than enough for Ubuntu. It's very small. There's different types. They're compatible with either VMware or Parallels or some other virtual machine manager. And I just go with the default, which is the... Um, it is specific to VirtualBox, but it works just as well. The dynamically allocated means that it starts with a small file and it increases as files are written to it. Um, so when you're done, when you start your installation, you have a zero byte file. When you end your installation, you have a maybe gigabyte file. Um, and then also some of this stuff can be tweaked later. The hard drive size is a little bit difficult. So if you think you need more, use more. It won't take up the space until it needs it anyway. Okay. So now the virtual machine is created, but I want to tweak a few things. Uh, number one is the network settings. I don't like having the virtual machine added because then it can't access resources on my network. So instead I bridge it, which means that it's going to get an IP address from the same place that my machine is getting an IP address. It's going to look just like another node on the network. The next thing is shared folders. I like to have a, sh a folder shared between my native machine and my virtual machine so that I can just drag and drop a file into that folder and be able to read it. I want it auto-mounted and I'm pretty happy with those settings. I'll double click on this and it's letting me know that until the guest extensions are installed 
things like the keyboard and mouse will be captured if I click inside this box and in the case of Mac um, I have to use the left command key to release that so I'd be able to move the mouse outside the box okay and it's going to ask me what ISO I want to use so I've selected here the Ubuntu ISO I downloaded and here it goes so with the latest versions of Ubuntu the VirtualBox support is built in so I don't even have to worry about losing my mouse I can already go inside and outside of the box pretty easily. I want to install this. I'll go ahead and download the updates while installing and do the third party software. Now, some people get worried about this erase disk and install Ubuntu. The disk that it's erasing is the virtual disk, not the real disk, not a real partition. So, this is completely safe. Time zone selection, nothing unusual there. Next, I think it's going to ask for the username, password, and such. Oh, keyboard. Okay, and the last thing I want to show out of this process, well, two more things. One is creating a snapshot. So a snapshot, um, well, it's a snapshot. Okay. It's one of the reasons I like having a virtual machine is so that I can make experimental changes, things that might affect the system adversely, and be able to roll back to what it was before. So. I'll go ahead and open up a terminal. Okay. And since I've made a snapshot, I'll do something really fun. Now, from this state, oh, lovely. Isn't going to reboot very well. However, I can select to restore the current snapshot, a fresh install, when I shut this down so that when I open it up again I'm back to a clean working system as if nothing had happened. In particular with VirtualBox the snapshot system is pretty advanced so I click here on snapshots it allows trees of snapshots so those are the important points of using VirtualBox with Ubuntu